Hey legends, welcome back to another Comment Chaos episode. So at the time of recording this, I am still in the naughty corner, in the sin bin, on one of the platforms that starts with a Y. <laughs> it's YouTube. But not technically on TikTok. So I have had a few videos be taken down from TikTok for breaking community guidelines. So you can see here, I'm just showing for those watching this on YouTube now, a couple of them have been removed and they were the ones that were to do with Mac scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Change the M and you know what I'm talking about, replace it with a V. So yeah, that episode, obviously, I've mentioned before, was taken down off YouTube. The clips were taken down off TikTok and I was putting the naughty corner. I'm not allowed to post at all on YouTube for a week. So anyway, we're moving on. I am going to get a lot smarter. So today we're going to go through some TikTok comments. That's the purpose of this episode. One of the clips that went on to TikTok was, why can't we critique the powerful? And this was in relation to how... <laughs> this brings it back to Jewish again. I don't care what someone's belief system is. I don't care what nationality they are, what race they are, what religion they follow, what gang they're a part of. I don't care what football team they follow. I don't give a damn about those types of things. If I think that we should be looking into someone, I'm going to look into that individual. If I think there's something dodgy with a particular family in the world, I'm going to look into that particular family. No, I'm not a detective. I'm not suggesting that I am. I just, look, I'm a human that loves to just discuss topics. I love to question things. I love to get answers in life on what is underneath surface level. I say this all the time. So with that in mind, I don't give a damn about all those other things. I'm still going to look underneath what is surface level when it comes to someone. That includes families like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. And what I have found is when you mention those families, that some people instantly label you an anti-Semite because those families are Jewish. And I think that that is absurd. I've made that very clear before. I don't I don't give a damn. I'm not critiquing being a Jew. I'm critiquing the corruption or you know, the manipulation or the level of control and abuse that they wield or that they hold, right? It's nothing to do with, with the fact that they are Jew. They just happen to be Jew. So I put a video up, why can't we critique the powerful, right? And so this was the comment section on TikTok. So we've got someone who says, if Jews have been so badly persecuted all over the world throughout history, maybe they should have a long, hard look at themselves. There's definitely something in this. I think he has a point. Again, this was nothing. My first original comment that I made on YouTube that brought all this up actually had nothing to do with being Jew, like absolutely nothing. This has turned into that because people are saying or someone has said that you are an anti-Semite now because of the comment that I made about how I'm critiquing these families, even though, again, it had nothing to do with being Jew. But I do think this person has a point. Again, I am not against Jews. I'm not. I am going to do an entire episode on this topic just because I think there is more to the story I really do but that'll be another day someone else has said yep it's insane it's used as a get out of jail free card because in the clip I said that there is you know hyper in-group preference when it comes to this this is this is the issue that I see right let me just make this clear what I am finding is that as a group and this is not all Jews by the way there are some incredible Jews out there this is a minority, I believe personally, of Jews that do have this hyper in-group preference where they <laughs> are allowed to get away with so much, right? Simply because they are Jew and because of their history of being persecuted, now you're not allowed to critique. And I have said very clearly, I think that is dangerous grounds, right? I, I think that that sets the scene for some really terrible shit to happen in the world, right? It would be, I don't care what the group is for any group, right? Let's just take Jew out of it for a second for any group. If let's say white people in general, right? Let's just use that as an example, because this is one I think most people would understand. If all white people were persecuted in history, let's just say, right? And then all of a sudden we said, you now cannot critique a white individual because of our history of persecution, that sets us up to then be able to persecute and do absolutely abhorrent things and dangerous things, but we cannot be scrutinized for it because of our history of being persecuted. 
right? That's ridiculous. Nobody would would allow that. I think it's wrong when it's allowed in a very small minority of the Jewish community. And it, this guy's right. It's used as a get out of jail free card. Again, this is not all Jews. Okay. I'm not anti-Jew. I feel like this is going to get flagged. Far out. Someone else has said it is by design. Co-opting religion makes mass killings palatable. It also erases accountability. Great point. Someone said, Shh, you can't say that. They are the victim. And I think they're being tongue in cheek. They also have a point. Someone else has said, it's almost as if someone tried wiping out their entire history and committed a genocide against them, a real one. Now, let me just read my response. I said, so we can't critique an individual or family for something completely unrelated to being a Jew just because they are in fact a Jew. That's dangerous grounds in my opinion. And then he's come back with, you're allowed to critique anyone you want, just leave the Jew part out. I said, yeah, I did. As in, I critiqued a family on YouTube and was told I was an anti-Semite simply because they were Jew, even though that was never mentioned and the critique had nothing to do with being Jewish. I was told you're not allowed to critique them because they are Jew. And that's really nuts to me. And then he said, why even pay attention to that comment or comments like that? It's bait and you bit hard. So then I said, ha ha ha, this is a podcast where I release two episodes a week. One on a topic and the second weekly episode is where I respond to viewers slash listeners comments and we discuss taboo topics. It wasn't bait. It was a thought provoking comment that I responded to, you know, context. People don't understand. That's the premise behind this podcast is I do one controversial taboo kind of topic. And then the second episode a week is the comment chaos version where I literally go through comments and respond. So yeah, it wasn't bait. I don't believe like the person had a thought provoking comment I just disagreed with it that's all someone else has said bro you can like meaning you can discuss them I said not without people screaming and kicking up a fuss he said so what and I said oh it doesn't stop me this is a clip from my podcast episode where I responded to viewers comments then Jono has said if you need to criticize a person slash family then do that for their action not because of their religion it's the grouping that's insulting and I said a hundred percent that's what happened in reverse I critiqued some potential elite families, didn't mention the word Jews or religion or anything even related, but just because a very small minority of those families happened to be Jew, I was informed I'm not allowed to critique them as instantly it makes me anti-Semi. It blew my mind. Jew didn't even enter the original convo. Someone else has said anti-Semitism exists, conspiracy theorist. (laughs) I said, sheesh, that's really relevant to the post, isn't it? Never said anti-Semitism doesn't exist. My point is that it's dangerous to not be allowed to critique someone who is Jew for something unrelated just because they're a Jew. Hyper in-group preference there. Again, this is my point. I'm not critiquing Jews. (laughs) I was critiquing some families that happened to be Jew. It was unrelated to being Jew, right? But again, I have dug slightly deeper and I'm going to go even deeper where I can see that a very small minority of that label does have massive hyper in-group preference and I do think that it is set up like that for a purpose of getting away with shitty stuff. I actually can see that. Again, I'm not talking about the entire group. I'm talking about a small minority who just happened to be a part of that group. But because of history because they were highly persecuted in history, right? I do think that now they're using that as a get out of jail free card for never being allowed to be critiqued for anything in the future. And I think that's how you end up with people like say a Hitler, a tyrant, right? Someone who does abhorrent things and, you know, has an agenda of control. I think that That is dangerous grounds for not being able to critique individuals just because of one aspect of them. So I've made my point clear. I'm going to do a whole episode on hyper in-group preference. And I'm also going to do a whole episode on the Israel-Palestinian thing. I may have a really awesome guest coming on soon. And we're going to discuss that, which will be highly controversial. Anyway, we're going to go to the next topic, which is about censorship. And my whole thing was about let's just be done with the censorship because this is my point. 
I think that as a human being, we should all be disgusted with the level of censorship and squashing of any difference of opinion or anyone who goes against mainstream or anyone who has a voice that is slightly different to what is considered acceptable. We should all be disgusted by the fact that that gets squashed, even if we don't necessarily agree with what's being said. And this is why I'm so strong on this, because when we have this high level of just absolutely abolishing everybody's voices that go against mainstream, that is very, very dangerous because eventually it's going to be you, you listening. Eventually you're going to say something if you haven't already that the establishment doesn't like and it will be silenced. It will get to the point where nobody is allowed to critique those in authority, those that are like mainstream authority, the media, politicians, celebrities, the systems, the institutions, everything that is seen as the establishment, it is getting to the point where anyone who sees things differently is absolutely squashed, ridiculed, silenced, put in the naughty corner, all that kind of stuff. And it, it is it is very, very dangerous because then we have no freedom of thought. We have no, no room for critical thought, for critical thinking. We have no room for difference of opinion. We have no room for discourse. We have no room, honestly, for any form of independence. And I do think that is dangerous territory that we're going down. This is why even if someone thinks differently to me, I think they should 100% be allowed to voice that opinion on social media, on any of the platforms. I genuinely do. Even if someone sees every single belief system out there differently to me, every single one of their values is different to me, their political agenda is different to me, their religious affiliations are different, whatever it is, I don't care. I think they should be allowed to speak because my whole thing is let's work on our own self-trust, our own self-responsibility and our own discernment and being able to apply critical thinking. And I think if that is promoted, then we wouldn't need censorship because you think about it. It wouldn't matter what anybody said online. We would look at that and be like, mm, yep, I've looked into it. Don't agree with them though. Or we'd be like, yep, you know what? I've looked into it and I can see their point of view. Instead of you're not allowed to say that. You are not allowed to say that. That is so messed up to me. And it really grinds my gears. So I did a whole post about how about instead of us being literally policed constantly about what we can and can't say, and look, it's an agenda. It's a, it's deliberate. This is not by accident. This is a very targeted, targeted thing. But how about instead of everyone gets so butthurt and all of our feelings, oh, our feelings are getting hurt. Oh, grow a pair and let's get over it and just let people speak. And then us as Freaking sovereign individuals can decide if we want to listen or not. That's my message. But anyway, I put this, gee, I'm getting fired up. I put this on TikTok and Jay Oakley has said, I have to agree with you. Only problem is when people are not telling the truth and presenting it as truth. I said, yeah, you've raised a great point there. I still think it's on us as individuals to hold discernment and self-responsibility if it means we can get rid of censorship because it's become a nightmare to navigate with a controversial podcast. Someone else has said, you ain't wrong. I've gotten comment blocked and they were movie titles that might just be Canadians as our government blocks stuff they don't want us to see. And by the way, I do think that Canada and Australia in particular are the two countries that are the testing grounds for a lot of this stuff. We are highly censored in Canada and Australia. And it was the same when it came to the 2020 mandates and protocols and all that it was strongly enforced in Canada and Australia in particular and the UK but I would say Canada and Australia it seems to be the highest and it's the same with censorship I said oh man it sounds full-on in Canada at the moment mind you here in Australia it's pretty much the same and just for movie titles it's a joke isn't it he goes yeah someone had a filter with the big forehead I said it kind of looks like mega mind so he was put in the naughty corner for saying that. Like, it's insane. Also, a guy got banned because of yuck and then like a vomit emoji. Like, they're banning for the most stupid things. I said, ha, 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 you got put in the naughty corner too. It's always for the most ridiculous things. He said it's horrible and it's only going to get worse. Just look at Bill C-293. 
I was like, oh God, I'm scared to look. I have no idea what that is and I'm going to look into it. Thank you for your comment, XAP underscore CJ. Thank you very much for your comment. I am going to look into that bill. I'm a little bit nervous to know what the crap that is. And then John Nevin has said, bad news for the future. Police state like the stuff of horror movies. We need new government, not more of the same. I said, fully agree. I hold hope as more people wake up, but yep, I'm right there with you. Someone else has said, TikTok has been like this for two years now. I said, it's crazy. Sadly, YouTube is the same. I love YouTube as I put all my podcast video recordings up there, but it's getting difficult to navigate the millions of policies you're up against and three strikes under one policy and your account is removed. Like it's, it's honestly insane. Someone else has said, there's a fucking thought. <laughs> yep. And then we've got another one. We need to change laws to go back to free speech, not worrying about everyone's truth, feelings, rights, etc. What nonsense. I said, it's becoming a full-time job, micromanaging everyone's feelings. A full-time job I never signed up for, nor am I getting paid for. And look, I'm being tongue in cheek, but I, I do think it is a serious issue. I have, I have pretty serious concerns when it comes to policing what we can and can't talk about. Like it just goes against human nature, right? It's like, who are you to say what I can and can't discuss? Just because you don't agree does not mean we cannot discuss it. That is what controversial as fuck the podcast is all about. We discuss anything, any topic, doesn't matter how taboo, how off limits it is, we will discuss it, even if it is uncomfortable for me as the host to discuss. Even if I have a guest come on and we see things differently, we will still discuss it. I hold space for discourse. I hold space for difference of opinion. Often I do highlight voices though that go against the establishment because they're the ones that are silenced. I, I see mainstream anything that is with the establishment as getting the, the largest amount of space for discussing their views, their opinions, their beliefs, right? Therefore, I do tend to hold more space on this podcast for those that are up against the establishment, for those that do see things differently than how the establishment wants us to see them, because they're the voices that get silenced, ridiculed, mocked, you know, just accounts getting taken off them and all that kind of thing. So yes, I will hold space for difference of opinion, but I will highlight more those that are a bit more anti-establishment and not even, you know what, not even anti-establishment because if you're anti something, I find highlighting and making bigger the opposite of what you want because when you're anti something, it's kind of giving more fire to the thing that you're anti. So it's not anti-establishment. It's more just like, freedom. It's more just like literally living free, sovereign lives that we want to live rather than being told who we are, who we're here to be, what we can and can't do. Like, yeah, I've made that message pretty clear. Anywho, <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that today. By the time you listen to this, it should be on YouTube as well. You Maybe you're watching this on YouTube, which means I'm out of the sin bin. So if you missed me, <laughs> if you wonder why I wasn't posting, that is why I actually was not allowed to post. I was banned from posting for a week, but I'm going to be very smart and make sure that I don't break any policies again. And I'm just going to have to be quite cunning in the way that I edit videos and yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Let's just say that. Anyway, I love you guts. Thank you so much for your comments. Please keep them coming. It doesn't matter what platform they're on. I will go through them. I respond to as many as I can. And I do find I get the most comments though on YouTube and on TikTok. Instagram for me is way more quiet, but look, I just need to invest more time in it and build it up. So that's on me, not you. If you're on Instagram, come say hi. <laughs> Come say hi. I love your guts. As always, have an incredible week. Keep your comments popping and I will keep my replies popping to legends. Have an awesome week. <laughs> Bye.